Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and this is probably going to be a quick and to the point video but just wanted to get one out this week and show you this really useful, um, another use shall I say of using the filter function in Office 365. If you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel and if you do enjoy this video please do hit that uh, like button, uh, it'd only be appreciated by me but as always it will help that uh, YouTube algorithm and help more people find this channel and the content. So to jump straight into today's uh, example, we're going to be working with salaries and probably just worth mentioning at this point, all the information that's being used in this tutorial is randomly generated information. So anything that might seem like it's actual real data or there's any uh, coincidental names, uh, I'm going to show you it's complete fluke, it's randomly generated data. What we're going to do is we're going to be using a filter function again, quite a popular function on the channel at the moment, and we'll be using it to pull out the top five largest salaries for the list of information we've got here. And also we'll be using it to then um, obviously display more than just the salary, we want to find out the department, the name of the person, and obviously what that salary is. And the reason for doing this is it just gives a really dynamic uh, use of Excel. You could use this maybe in a dashboard or even just useful to use when in a meeting or presenting to someone such as a stakeholder who would want to be able to dynamically jump between different scenarios of this information. So to jump straight in, uh, if you haven't seen how to use a filter function before, you can find videos going in more depth on our channel, uh, else I'll, you'll probably get a good understanding of it in this today's video, but I'll be trying to keep it as brief as possible because there is already a video on it. So the first thing we want to do is use our filter criteria or use our filter function to give us just uh, a filtered list of all this name, all this information over here, uh, but it's only the top five salaries. So in order to do that, we're going to go equals filter, open our brackets, and this information on the left here, these three columns, this is already formatted into a table. If I click in, well, if I click into here before doing that, you can see we get our des uh, table design tab, and you can see the table name is the salary table that I've named it. Going back to our filter function, if I do equals filter, open brackets, and I now need to select the array. Because it's the table, I just need to select the whole table. And as we know, if we go to the top corner here, we get this arrow and we can select the whole table like so. The next part is what is going to be our filter or what are we going to apply our filter to? For us, it's going to be yearly salary. So if we hover above yearly salary, we can select the whole column like this. And to start with, all we want to do is say, okay, we only want to look at the largest um, five salaries. So we're going to use our large function for this. So go large, open brackets, cool. And so our array for that is going to be again, yearly salary, and it is the fifth largest. And I think I just skimmed through that. So let's just go quickly back. So the first part is we're gonna be filtering our salary table. The next part is we want to uh, apply criteria to the salary column. So that's what we've selected here. And extending from that, we're going to use our large to get our fifth largest um, salary. So in all essence, this whole part I've highlighted here is basically just saying filter this column to only pull out values that are the fifth largest salary. If I hit enter, oh, we need another little close back at the end here. And there we go. We can see our information has expen expanded for us. And it would seem, yeah, and I nearly fooled myself in. You can see what's happened here is we've got only two pieces of information. And that's because what it's done is it said, okay, find the fifth largest salary in that range. And the fifth largest is 125,000. Uh, we actually want to change this because we don't want the fifth largest. We want everything what's the fifth or greater. So the top five really. So all we need to do is go back to our formula here and just change this. So rather than being equal to the fifth largest, we want it to be greater than or equal to the fifth largest. So if you hit enter now, you can see how that has now expanded and we've got a range of salaries. So from 140,000 uh, all the way to 125,000. So we've got a full range in there now. Let's just change the formatting of this. So let's go in here and let's just say, yep, change that to that. Maybe just extend that, that extend, <laughs> expand that down further as you'll see. So the benefit of obviously using the formula as we've done, um, and we're obviously looking at this part here, is if I was a person looking at this and we wanted to be dynamic, and I said, well, actually, I'm interested in seeing the top 10. 
all they need to do is go enter 10 and you can see you now got 10 uh, the top 10 salaries rather than just the top five and obviously it's a dynamic formula so it's going to keep changing as we go through this what we want, want to do now is just apply a bit of sorting. So oh, at the moment, we can see it's just all, all over the place, really. We don't know what the largest salary is unless we really look into the data. So in order to do so, I'm just going to go back into this function again. And we're going to enter our sort function at the very beginning. And we've got all that as our array. And then right at the end here in my sort index, uh, I need to firstly put in here column three, so index number is going to be three, and it's because we're going to be filtering or sorting on the third column within our range. Do comma again, and then the sort order for us is going to be descending. So we want to have the descending from the highest salary down to the lowest salary, should I say, within obviously the criteria of our top 10 in this particular example. If I now close the brackets, hit enter, you can see as easy as that, the salary is now ordered from uh, in descending order. And um, this is particularly beneficial, and I was actually going to then talk about having duplicate um, values in here, um, but I've already got one, coincidentally. You can see for sales and human resources, again, the benefit is we've got two uh, individuals here who are on the same salary. Um, so this is the benefit of obviously using this formula. If we're using, say, just large on its own, then obviously this is where you'd have a problem where it'd only find the first um, matching criteria in a list rather than pulling out the multiple examples as you're seeing here. We're going to take this one step further and just do uh, add some array con or use, should I say, our array constants in the sort function in order to get a bit more organization with the department name. So what we're going to do is we want to organize uh, a bit more, so we want to have it by uh, department being filtered on here as well. To do that, we just need to go and use, like I say, array constants. And to do that, we use our squiggly little brackets, so you can see here. So the first thing I want to do is to still uh, sort by the uh, salary column first. And then the next thing I want to do is to sort by the department. So all I need to do for that is add another comma and this time make a reference to the index what contains the department. So it's for us, it's number one for column number one. And then when it comes to our ordering, we're going to keep it so that our salary is in descending order first. And then the next part we want to do, if we do the right bracket, there we go, go into there. So this time I'm now going to reference uh, column number, well no, not column number one, sorry. So the first part, just to make this clear, so we can see we've got three comma one in this first part. That's because we're going to be filtering by column number three in essence first, followed by column number one. And this time when we're talking about order, we want descending uh, for our salary, what's column number three. And I now want ascending for the department. So I'm just going to put a number one like so, and just add my squiggly lines back in there. Hit enter. And you can now see how that has been formatted, or not formatted, that has been changed for us as well. This way, we just make sure that we keep everything uh, in a bit more presentable format. And you could obviously extend your sorting and your ordering uh, as much or as little as required. And just to go back through that again, we can see everything is still nicely dynamic. So if you wanted to only look at five or three, all that information is there for us. The last thing that's worth mentioning is our data is obviously limited. We've only got so many rows and actually we've got in total, yeah, 34 rows of information or 34 names in our table. So what happens if someone says they want to see this, the top um, 40 salaries? Obviously at the moment we're going to get the uh, hashtag num error because obviously it's entering, we're entering a value here what's in excess of actual the data we have. So in order to deal with this, all we're going to do here is at the beginning of our formula, we're going to enter if error, open our brackets, and then right at the end here, we're going to do uh, uh, please enter a lower value. Or obviously you can put whatever is more suitable um, as you required. So if we now go in here, we put 34, you know we can see the, all 34 salaries in descending order. If we went into top five, we can see top five. And if we went and put in here some silly number that's obviously not available, we're now gonna have a nice bit of text there rather than just showing that error message. And also the benefit of having text here as well is it shows the user what they need to do to rectify that error. Because often when a user will see an error, they might not always know what it means, so they'll then think something's broken. But obviously this is the benefit of putting the text there. 
And obviously, because it is just a free add text to whatever you require, you can just put whatever information you need there or you feel is useful to the user. So I think that was actually quite a quick whistle stop tour video. I tried to keep it short, but as always, I probably kept it longer than I intended. If you do have any questions, do please just leave a comment below this video, or you can reach out to me in either the Facebook or Instagram page uh, for this channel. If you did enjoy the video, please, as mentioned before, do give the video a like. Uh, it only shows me um, the sort of content you'd like to see more of, but it also, as always, helps that YouTube algorithm to help more people find the channel. And lastly, if it's the first time to the channel or you're a repeat viewer, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button um, so that you are notified of all of our future videos as they come out. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. I always keep forgetting to mention this, but if you go into the description for this video below, you'll find a link that will allow you to download this very workbook that I've been using in today's tutorial. So I hope that will be useful for you as well if you're working through this video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.